Hello, hello guys and gals, and welcome to the first video on the practice problems that are in your Unit 5 Part 2 notes packet. Okay, so we are starting with practice problem 1 here, which is about half-life. So the question says, if 87.5% of a sample of pure iodine-131 decays in 24 days, what is the half-life of iodine-131? Okay, well, they're not actually asking me for a rate here. They're asking me to determine the half-life of iodine-131. So I've got to think. Well, the problem is that they did not give me how much of a sample I have. Now, this is good and bad news. Bad because, eh, well, sometimes we just like to have a sample. But good because we can just assume or pretend that we had a 100-gram sample. Why? Because this is a multiple choice problem and we will not get a calculator on this. So it's much easier to say you've used up 87.5 grams than try to figure out what 87.5% is of something like 50 or 25 without your calculator. So 87.5% of 100 is 87.5. So that's how much we've used up already. That's how much we've lost, which means at the end of 24 days, we only have 12 and a half grams left. Okay. So now we've got to figure out if this is how much we have left after 24 days, how many half-lives did we go through? And once we figure that out, we can figure out how long one half-life is. So if we started with 100 grams, it took one half-life to get to 50. It took another half-life to get to 25. And finally, it took one more half-life to get to 12 and a half. So it only took us three half-lives. And those three half-lives took us 24 days. So how long would one half-life take? Well, 24 divided by 3 tells us that one half-life would have taken eight days. So the correct answer to this question is B, if it doesn't lock me out of my own document. <laughs> so here we go. The correct answer to this question is B. All right, let's look at question, practice problem two. The half-life of chromium-55 is about two hours. The delivery of a sample of this isotope from the reactor to a lab requires 12 hours. About what mass of material should be shipped so that one milligram of chromium-55 is delivered to the lab. So basically they're saying, we need to really understand what this question is saying because it's worded kind of strangely, really complexly, really. We could word it another way. We could say, okay, the lab needs one milligram. It takes 12 hours to get to the lab. And after two hours, I'm going to lose half of my sample. So how much chromium-55 should I send? So that way when it gets there they have at least one gram of it. Hmm? Well, first we should think about how many half-life this thing is under going to undergo in 12 hours. Obviously, if one half-life is two hours, then 12 hours is going to be six half-lives. This trip is going to take six half-lives. So we know that we need, at the very least enough to leave us with one gram after six, or milligrams, after six half-lives. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We know we have to go through at least six half-lives, so we should send at least enough to cover those six. So instead of dividing by two now, we're going to say, okay, we have to multiply by two. Because if you send any less than one milligram, obviously you won't have one milligram when you get there. We need to send more than one milligram. So before one milligram was halved, how much did I have? Well, I had two milligrams. Before that was halved, I would have had four. Before that was halved, I would have had eight. Before that was halved, I would have had 16. Before that was halved, I would have had 32. And before that was halved, I would have had 64. So the least amount of chromium-55 that we can send and make sure that the lab still gets one milligram is 64 milligrams of chromium-55. So let's see if that's an answer choice on here. And it is, and of course the answer is, again, B. Okay, so that is it for the practice problems dealing with the first section of these notes. So I'll make a different... Um, video for the other sections. Let me know if you guys have any